Optimism, the layer two blockchain has the most ambitious vision in crypto. In fact, calling it a simple blockchain just feels plain wrong once your eyes are open to what is actually possible. Optimism is more than just a web three project. It's an entire new economic system that could eventually replace countries and governments. The best part is that optimism would be a better system than anything that exists today, if it all goes as planned. For those of you that haven't heard of optimism or have only heard of it as one of the many layer two networks that have popped up over the last few years, you might think I'm a crazy person. Well, jokes on you because I am a crazy person. <laughs> But even so, maybe it takes a crazy person to realize all of the incredible things that are possible with this crypto network. Today, Optimism is the second biggest layer two network on Ethereum with a token worth billions of dollars and the number of transactions it's processing hitting new highs every single day. But in order to understand where Optimism is going, you need to understand where it came from. On January 31st, 2019, the precursor to Optimism called Plasma Group was announced. Plasma Group was a nonprofit organization made up of a few researchers trying to push Ethereum scalability. They were focused on a technology called Plasma, which was originally outlined in a 2017 paper by Ethereum and Joseph Poon, who is also the creator of the Bitcoin Lightning Network. Plasma Group published a number of open source tools and research during their operation. As part of their research, they published the architecture for something called an optimistic rollup, which would go on to be the leading roll-up technology in use today. Almost exactly one year from the announcement of its formation, Plasma Group made two more announcements. First, the shuttering of Plasma Group, and second, the creation of a brand new public benefits corporation called Optimism. Optimism would focus on using this brand new optimistic roll-up technology to scale Ethereum. Beyond scaling Ethereum, and even more importantly, Optimism would try and create a better model to fund public goods. From the original Optimism announcement post comes a very important statement on public goods funding. We believe that layer two itself represents a unique opportunity to solve this problem. Particularly, it allows us to re-architect the network's economics and close the loop. Value produced by the network can be recycled to grow and sustain it. This realization, in my opinion, is way more important to the success of Optimism than the Optimism optimistic rollup that they created. The ability to create this new economic system on layer two to close the loop is what makes Optimism the most ambitious project in crypto. And if it works, will have a massive impact on humanity as we know it. So what exactly is this economic model? Retroactive public goods funding is the economic engine that powers the Optimism network and it's essential for understanding Optimism's grand ambitions. It sounds like a mouthful, but it's actually quite simple once you break it down. Public goods are things that are created that anybody can use and benefit from. Free public parks and libraries in a community are examples of public goods. Thinking about technology, open source software is also a public good. Because Optimism came from Plasma Group, which was actually creating public goods through its research, public goods are baked into Optimism's DNA. Thinking more specifically about the current Optimism Layer 2 network, anything that benefits everybody on the network could be considered a public good. This could mean contributing to Optimism's code base, creating a free decentralized application for people to use, or creating free educational content about Optimism. Obviously, these are good things to have, but normally the funding of public goods happens before these goods are created. For example, for a public park or a library, funding comes in the form of a city budget. For open source code, it might be a grant given by the network. But with retroactive public goods funding, this funding happens after the public goods have already been built and used. So why would anybody want to do that? It all boils down to the equation, impact equals profit. If you are distributing the funding after the project is already up and running, you can make the reward proportional to how impactful the project has actually been. Thinking about how grants are given out today, there's usually some kind of grant committee that gives out grants that are awarded based on the project hitting certain milestones. This is a centralized process where the creativity is limited to those serving on the grant committee. Even worse is that the direct incentive for the grant recipient is to do the minimum work required to hit those milestones and cash in on the grant. Through retroactive public goods funding, the creativity is unlimited because you don't need to judge what the project could do 
but you just need to judge what it has already done, which is much easier. As far as incentives go, the grant recipient is incentivized to make the biggest impact as efficiently as possible. One valid question is about how these public goods projects will actually get off the ground if they're not getting any money up front. First off, traditional grants could still be available. We don't have to stop using that tool. But in a world where the retroactive public goods funding pie is big enough, investors could actually fund these public goods projects as if they were startups in the hopes that they would get a share of the reward if it was successful. Eventually, as optimism grows, it could start reaching beyond just the blockchain. Optimism as a global economic system could be the solution to many of the problems that humanity is facing. Up until this point, capitalism has been the most efficient and productive economic system, but it has its downsides in the form of externalities. If you remember Economics 101, externalities are a cost or benefit received by third parties who are not directly involved in a transaction. If it's a cost, it's called a negative externality. And if it's a benefit, it's called a positive externality. For example, a shoe factory that is polluting a community's river is an example of a negative externality. It has nothing to do with the selling of shoes. NASA inventing Velcro is a positive externality because most of the effects were felt outside of that organization. Many of the flaws of capitalism can be traced to the managing of these externalities. While negative externalities might not be handled perfectly, we currently do have a solution in the form of a government and legal system. Regulations are created so that companies will actually feel the effect of the negative externalities that they're responsible for. If the shoe factory is damaging the community, it would either be shut down or fined. The thing is, we don't really have a good way right now to bring the positive externalities back into the equation. This is why problems like climate change are so hard to tackle as a society. If one person solved climate change today, the rewards to them would not be nearly proportional to the impact that they had, unless there was retroactive public goods funding from optimism. In a world where optimism exists and impact equals profit, society would become meaningfully better. Healthcare would be way cheaper because companies that invent life-saving medicine would be able to get their rewards from retroactive public goods funding instead of needing to extract value from the customers who need it the most. Nonprofits who are solving big global problems would suddenly have the same powerful incentive system as the biggest for-profit companies, meaning that they would be able to hire the best talent and pay them competitive salaries to solve the world's most important problems. Chronically underpaid professions like teachers, social workers, and firefighters would all be rewarded for their work. If, like me, you see how amazing the world could become if optimism is successful, I encourage you to get involved. Contribute to open source code, build some cool projects, participate in governance, the path is up to you. But with optimism, the bigger your impact, the more you will be rewarded. If you own OP tokens, those tokens actually have voting power, which contributes to the governance of optimism. You can vote yourself, or you can delegate your votes to somebody who has committed to doing the research required to make good decisions. If you think that your vision for optimism aligns with mine, I would love to be your delegate. It's free and requires just a few clicks. I'll make sure to provide a link to my delegate profile in the description. Thanks for watching, stay optimistic, and I'll see you in the next video.